Yeah. Where are you originally from? I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. Oh, yeah, long talker. My bad, my bad. I'm, 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 like, if, if, like, if I'm, like, um... <laughs> you, I got you, I got you. Yeah, I got you. Like, give me, like, props. I got you, I got you. Like, I can talk, bro. So, I'm, obviously, I'm from the DMV, and I know Baltimore doesn't really claim the DMV, but it's also, it goes, like, hand in hand. Yeah. But the same thing with uh, people that are from Maryland as a whole. Yeah. There's, like, this huge ambition and grit there, you know, as a community, as black people, just, like, it's like something different in the water up there. Yeah, you I definitely agree. uh you you agree with that? Yeah, especially in, yeah. From yeah. your side, are there a lot of creators that you have met in the area that may not get their may not ever get like highlighted or maybe never get appreciated in the way that they should? Yeah, Baltimore is funny because we're in Tampa and um, it might not have anything to do with creators, but the bricks that you walk out on here are all like Baltimore bricks and stuff, right? So I think like. How do I put it? Like, I think Baltimore as a whole, maybe, or maybe just that area as a whole, people don't understand how significant that area is just geographically when it comes to, like, it being a port city and its historical significance in America and things like that, right? So, just like, I guess my point in saying that is, like, just foundationally, just like the by road facts of how Baltimore came to be mm -hmm. is, is more um, important than a lot of people will understand, which I guess kind of trickles down to the creators and whatnot. Um, to answer the question, I'm mean, like, yeah, I, mean, I come across creators every single day that um maybe not every day but like every week or whatever like often that are from baltimore that are from maryland and to be honest like there's a certain um even if it's like and i think honestly it's probably just like a northeast thing okay because like even if i come across creators that are like from new york or like just like big bustling cities where i know that there's stuff going on that you have to that you have to have work i think and tenacity for then they automatically have like a certain level of like validity in my mm -hmm. eyes. For sure. okay like I know, I know me being from PG County. I'm from PG County. I know coming down here to Florida was a huge culture shock. Yeah. Because up there, like brotherhood is just like not trying to be like sound sweet or nothing. Like friendship is huge. Yeah, for sure. Like brotherhood, sisterhood, whatever. Like family. You know somebody, you take that friendship serious, and you just keep rocking with them. Yeah. I know down here, I don't really care who comes to me at this point. I've met a lot of fake people down here. And I don't know what it looks like in the business side of Maryland. Yeah. But I saw a creator the other day. He charged like $600 for 30 minutes of photography. Yeah. Down here in Tampa, I don't think anybody's ever paying that. Like, yeah. I know, um, I guess it's been hard. Hard for, hard to find business and people that actually want to pay you for your actual work. For sure. Down here. Do you think that, or what do you think? Like, why do you think that it's such a difference between here and up there? Yeah, to be honest, I don't, I don't know if I agree that there is a difference. To be really? honest, like, oh, there's true. a lot of shiesty, especially like oh, depending true. on the industry that you work in, whether it be music or not. There's a lot of like, I mean, like Baltimore has a reputation of being like a crab in a crab in a barrel, a crab in a bucket mm. city type shit, where everybody else is dragging each other down because they're jealous of the next person winning. And I've seen that like countless times over and over. But to be honest, the more I travel. It might be exacerbated in Baltimore because of like socioeconomic phenomena that have to do with like poverty and okay. and like food deserts and I guess just reasons like I guess like my point is like if you zoom out any big city whether it's Chicago, Baltimore, whatever, Detroit, the reason why like people act the way they act, I guess Tampa is is because of like just like a lack of resources right okay. like they're just they just don't have what they need on the Maslow's hierarchy of needs at the bottom level when it comes to food love water mm. housing shelter etc cetera, etc cetera. now I'm not gonna lie I kind of shit on the projects down here sometimes because what like, you mean by that like it won't work like bro like because of course like I work in the music industry so I've gone like I've worked with a couple rappers and stuff down here that are from like the quote unquote hood I'm not gonna say like obviously there's a hood everywhere right and poverty is poverty right but like baltimore is a different type of poverty and like people like i don't think people understand that like like okay. it looks like a war's leg like not like the entire city but there are certain parts like the 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 worst parts of baltimore outclass outclass like, i don't know out impoverished out impoverished yeah out yeah the, like te like out 10 poverty. times than tampa out and i'm only saying to say again yeah, i'm not like comparing people's i'm not trying to compare people's um struggles or anything but my point in saying that is to answer the question i don't think it's necessarily any different in baltimore than it is anywhere else i think there are a lot of people especially people in baltimore i think that for the most part why people can't get paid what they want to get paid is 
it's hard out here. I guess it just is, man. Like, I, I think it's, it's the hardest thing to accept, at least right now, especially the people that I've been around, come in contact with. You, for sure, I've definitely experienced There's no doubt that you've experienced yeah. it. I don't even know the amount of number of artists that you've met who maybe either don't pay or just, I, I don't know. I just know me being a little bit more on the sports side, yeah. I haven't really tapped too much into the media side of music yet. Yeah. I know I've, it's hard to get people to simply pay you. You know, you get the same text over and over like, oh, we got you, we got you. We got you. you know, it's not coming. But how did you originally get into what you're doing now? Yeah, I had a class, I had a high school class that was a digital media class, you know. We had like dumb little assignments of like creating I guess they're not really dumb, but like we had small dumb. assignments. I mean, they're not dumb, but we had small assignments of like creating XYZ video or. Uh, Did they only make, seem dumb because you kind of felt like you knew what you were doing? No, I guess I didn't really mean dumb. I'm just trying to say that they were my new. Like they weren't. They weren't. They didn't have like a big effect on my career. But I guess my point in saying that is like that's what really first introduced me to like the softwares and whatnot, and to like the world of creation. Mm -hmm. I guess in the digital sense. And then once I got to Tampa, I had like a, a chip on my shoulder because of a couple of things that I in like growing up. So I busted my ass learning like the actual production side of content, right? So actually taking the photos and the videos and editing. And then for the past two years, I've been focusing more on the digital side when it comes to like email marketing, digital marketing, social media marketing, and really understanding just how to how to sell more things. Okay, I know personally, I know you do a lot. I know many people may not know who you are yet, but I know for a fact yeah. since we went to the same school, it's obviously we kind of work the same hours, you know, it's more than a nine to five. Behind the scenes, what could you tell other people who maybe want to tap into, you know, like the media side of the industry, media side of sports, media side of anything of the unseen hours that actually get you the opportunities, you know, up front? Damn, that's hard. <laughs> because, like, there's so, there's so much, and it's such like a case by case basis. Like it's hard mm. to give like blanket advice to say like just do this and outside of like, and I also don't want to sound like cheap, like yeah. corny and generic and say like work hard and <laughs> and like put your head down and like cut out the track. Like obviously you feel what I'm saying like I don't think you need me or anybody else like that has any like real expertise to tell you that. But if I had to say maybe one thing, I think it would have to do with discernment as a whole that's you in a sense of like just understanding what you want and what's okay and what's not okay i feel like and expectations okay because i think a lot of us are more happy or are are, are how do i put it a lot of us have expectations of how things should go mm -hmm. And then when they don't go like that, it throws off our whole game plan. And we stop doing what we know what's going to work, and which is when you get the generic courting advice that's like, keep trying. It's like, all right, bro. But I think what, what, what's really deep down for a lot of people to really make shit work is to just like really let go of expectations. And to like have goals and have dreams and to know what you want, but like be willing to adapt those things. Like if different curveballs come your way. And like, I guess ultimately, Especially what I've been doing recently, just love yourself, man. Like, like, just, like, find happiness in the journey, like the, the journey over the destination. Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of us chase like the the goal, mm -hmm. and the goal is nice, and it's and you need goals to like to to have the fire to and passion to 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 put in the work daily. But you have to ultimately fall in love with actually like, doing the work. Yeah, I think I just 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 reached it. Like, of course, I've I've always been a hard worker. I've always have a uh, specific reasons to why my ambition is so high and just grit, you know, determination, all that. But I think I just finally kind of broke out of the competition side of trying to compete with creators or compete with people, you know, all that yeah. jazz. I, I've stopped that completely and just falling in love with the process. Me networking, especially, and just like enjoying it all the way through. It's been so much more peaceful. Oh my goodness. What is like, well, so I know you have your own slogan. Stay dizzy. Yeah, stay dizzy, stay dizzy. If yep. you know him and you either DM him, DM him and you see the little swoosh. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime I like messages, I've changed the emoji to and I so. expect it. I don't I really don't expect nothing less. I'm not even kidding. But so what 
do you think or to you is different like from your photography game or just like the content you produce for your oh, clients and i know you care a lot yeah um what's different about what i do what like what makes me special um it's honestly a question that i've been trying to like dive deeper mm. into into lately i think a couple years ago i might have told you that like that i work harder or that or even now like a part of me wants to say i have xyz amount of experiences working with stephen marley working with iration working with um drake working with 300 like working with like all these different 740 projects like all these different i'm not gonna say accolades but like accomplishments don't forget burner boy bro for me and but like just <laughs> i'm like at this, i have like 50 published articles like I could, I could i could go on about like the shit but like i don't think that's what really makes me different I think the experience is good, but I think it really makes me different. I think what really makes me different is like my compass, like my moral compass. Okay. And like, I look, I'm not gonna say I hate saying that, but it's a weird thing to say because like in business, that's not like, obviously we learn a lot about like ethics and like, it's funny cause I'm in school right now, right? And any, <laughs> any, any, any business class or any class that I have at all, the first week is always about like yeah, ethics. Dude always and you know that right like they always have the the well yeah everything is about ethics da, 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 right but i guess like when it actually like when the rubber is the road sometimes it is unethical like it's about like business is really about making money man mm-hmm. feel me mm-hmm. like that's what that shit is about i don't care how you like chop it up the end me? of the day so what i really like think what makes me different is my morals mm-hmm. and what i mean by that is I'm not here to like make money the fastest. I'm not. I'm here to like build a brand and like really, really dig deeper. Like if you're an artist, you wanna work with me. I'm not gonna say I won't work with you, especially like if you wanna pay my rate, I have no problem. So I mean, I'd, lo- I'd love to take your money, okay? No problem. But I'm, I will always, no matter, if you work for me, you will understand or I will always try to do my best to impress upon you as my client, as an artist, as somebody who has a voice and is good at creativity and da 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 That like, why are you doing what are you do- what, what you're doing? Like, why are you making the music you're making? Who are you trying to speak to? And yeah, like just, just what's your purpose? Which is why I work in reggae now. Because everything's about Ja Rastafari, everything's about like I always say, reggae, and this is my last thing about this. Reggae, no, good, reggae, or R- Rastafarianism is like the biggest pro-black Christianity. Mm. And like Stephen Marley gets up there. Stephen Marley, they just had a tour. Stephen, Damian, Kamani, Julian, and Ziggy. I said that out of order, but they they get up there every day. Or over this, I saw two of their shows on tour, and you can tell that when they get up there, it's not just music to them. Mm. Like it's church. Like they get up there and they and they're and they're evangelizing like that and that's why they've been so driven that's why you still know about the marley's and da, 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 right because it's not just performing it's not just music it's not just like this is their life blood i mean like this is what they truly believe in what they truly push on what they what they and 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 you see people like um the son the the nephew who's his dad is rohan and his mom is Oh my gosh, what's her, what's his name? Praise John the Moon, like fucking, what's his name? Oh, uh, oh my God, YG Marley. Yeah, yeah, bro, that shit is like five times platinum. And like that makes me so happy inside because what that means is that people, especially in a world of like sadness all the time, people still want happiness. Mm People still crave it. People mm-hmm. and people will like that's a reggae song. Like at <laughs> first, at first I listened to it, I was like, oh, it's kind of poppy. Mm-hmm. And not to say it's not kind of poppy, but like, bro, that's a reggae song. It has the rock steady tone. They got rock, everything rock, to rock, it. But like, bro, like, mm-hmm. I know, like, okay, see, my I got a lot of uh, Caribbean relatives. Right, half of my family's from Barbados. Yeah. Just because uh, maybe they're older, you know, the older generation. Up, of course, is YG Marley. They might compare it. So, you know, it's dad, Bob Marley, like, yeah. that, I, like, it's almost like they're kind of limited to seeing it and understanding that was always the effect. Yeah. That was always, like, the reasoning behind making those songs. Um, dang, like, I, I, I've never thought of it like that. And I, now I can see why you love it so much. Like, you love 
Bro, that's that making shit, stuff man. for him and just being in that environment. Like some yeah. like not like I love rap, I love hip hop, like all that stuff is good, bro. Like it's unequivocal. Vibes are better than reggae accessible. It's like unarguable. It's kind of like, the truth though. Most of rap now is sex, drugs, it's unarguable. Money. Okay, sex, so, love, money, it really is. sex, love, car. <laughs> it's hard. Um, damn. So how, what is like? I guess your favorite art. I I might not even know. What is your favorite artist? Or who is your favorite artist? Stephen Marley. They work with. So I listen far. to Stephen Marley. Stephen Marley. I listen. I listen to him every day. Did you grow up listening to reggae at all? Yeah, my dad was a big. My dad. My dad. My parents are are deadheads. They're grateful. They listen to the Grateful Dead. Grateful Dead. Um, which Dead. is which is oh my gosh, bro. They they're like they were like 1970s era like Woodstock 1970s 80s and like I guess early 90s where yeah. like you have like countercultural movement and Dare yeah. and um, uh, 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 Woodstock and like I guess just countercultural drugs sex hippies rock and roll right. Um, People like Bob Dylan, Bob Weir, or Jerry Garcia, like, I guess my point is, yeah, my parents were big hippies, like, growing up, and they've always been about, like, revolution. So, like, it's definitely in the blood, def- definitely, like, in the, in the, what's gonna happen for me, always, always what I've been about, and, um. So that's, that's technically always been in you. Like, you've always yeah, just, bro, like, had I, it. I dig it, bro. How does that, how does that tie into your camera work and just how does that tie into your overall like ethos like how i go about what yeah I do. exactly um like i said i like i've gotten to the point and, and this is like i'm super lucky right and i think people, more people need to say that more people that are successful not to say like i, I do well for myself right mm-hmm. but i think like more like bigger people you just say like how lucky they are mm-hmm. And that's like, I guess, a little side note tangent, but like, I'm super lucky to be like in the position that I am. But nonetheless, I've also worked hard to be in the position I am. And I'm saying all this to say that at this point in my career, I don't take on new clients. I don't work with you. I don't do anything that I don't want to do specifically when it comes to like the messages that I'm promoting. I mean, I've had opportunities to work on like certain records for like certain artists in in hip hop and rap, like that, the record itself, the record record. Yeah, like 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 marketed. Okay. You know, like I, I'm not a producer or anything, but like when you when you're a marketer and you work on records, you get to like help get it on blogs and articles, marketing or I love what mark, uh, email marketing and like articles and um, like sometimes based on like the content that you want to create, you get to meet with the artist and da 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 da. But like, and that I guess that's why you don't see me working in hip hop and rap, like rarely. Okay. So I mean, the only the only rapper that I would work with coming up is somebody named Lil Russell. And oh, I, 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 cause, cause I probably showed you him last time. I think you did. Think you definitely did. And he's a revolution, bro. But right. like you can see it. That basically gives you an extra edge of just like your eyes are like conditioned to it almost. You, know? you can see it before it even happens. I'm like, hey, brother, Diddy shit is not surprising. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 caught me off guard. <laughs> like, and I'm not saying I ever, like, I've never worked with Diddy, bro. I've never worked with anybody close to Diddy. And I've never experienced nothing like that. But, like, when okay. it comes to just, like, the, the hubris and the ego and the power. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, what do you think is going to happen when somebody has that much power and that much money? You know what's wild? So Specifically in rap and hip hop. There's a if you, have you heard of the movie Link's Twice that was directed by Zoe Kravitz? Have you I've heard, heard of that? By Dog. It. And so the thing was, I watched it twice, and I absolutely loved it. And of course, saying that about a movie that demonstrates yeah. the abuse of power, of course, like they gotta watch. They're like, why is he saying love it? Yeah. Well, being a movie person, I understand the uses of color, the subliminal messages behind things that are going on. I get it. But when that came out. That's when the Diddy allegations started to come out. The movie got taken down out of theaters. Damn. So I peeped it. I was like, oh, shoot. Like, there's, there's something going on behind this. But, um, so the basically the movie, it's like a mock setup of what could possibly go down at Diddy parties. Yeah. And they show you exactly, like, the inside of the mind of people who do have power. So, obviously, it makes sense why, you know, they trying to take it down out of theaters. exposing stuff but like how could how could i guess how could you 
see that. I know I know exactly what you're saying, but it's obvious. I mean, like, even... From a media perspective, too. I think people forget, because we're also behind the camera, we kind of understand how the general media, mass yeah. media, kind of works. Yeah, and I guess, like... Like, how would I know? I guess, like, what I also want to make clear is, like, it's... Like, again, like, I'm not talking about... Like, I have never seen anybody get sex trafficked, but, like, on a very minute level. Like, just when you meet people, when you talk to people. You can pick up their energy. You can pick it up. You can you can see, like, why they do what they do. And, like, especially... I guess just how I grew up and what I had to deal with and da 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 Like, I've become very attuned with... With... Again, like, I guess the, the reading the room. Mm. But also, like, honestly, willing to do some sort of, like background research hmm. on like who i'm meeting or like people i talk to where they're from and, and what they believe in to obviously to the best of, a, of your extent yeah. using the internet right so if i like for example if i um I'm trying to think of it. if i go to meet someone who's a record label exec in some shape way or form and i have a bunch of friends who have said that they've worked with in the past and they've gotten paid but there's always like this weird undertone of of um of like condescension maybe or like that he knows everything and that like like not respecting your work mm. ah. i would i like <laughs> i got plenty I, of those for me and i and i like part of me wants to say like if you paid me a million dollars i still wouldn't say no i still would say no still would say no Part of me wants to say that, and I don't know if that's the case, but, but you, put you it this way: of, like, like yeah, I've definitely been yourself. offered like like decent amount, of, like decent sized contracts, and been like, I'm good. Yeah, because just I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's just not. It's so insane. There's I, no amount of money that's worth it. I, I really, I really believe that. It really isn't. Like, and of course, people that may even hear this clip, like, man, you gonna take them up? No, you do get to a certain point. Eventually, when you do know your value you understand who also doesn't value you. And like, I just started recently been offered loads of money by people who are like, oh, you can work a certain amount of months with me, but I know like, they want me 24 seven, and that yeah. still is not even gonna be the equivalent to, plus, sorry. But for people that, if you hire a videographer, photographer, whatever, and you put your own filter, or your own stuff over, <laughs> over the creation, bro, you're kind of just ruining their reputation and also you're ruining the clip. Like, please stop doing that. Like, just all around. That's just a personal side note. But <laughs> No, I've, I've low-key always thought, and I've I proved this for myself, but I've seen, like, kids, bro, like, you can hustle your way to 100K a year. Mm. Like, you can't. Like, like if you if you know how to talk to people and put yourself in the right rooms, you can, you can hustle your way to 100K a year. But it's not sustainable. You're going to bring yourself out. Ah, okay. I was about to say, well, wait. You you're going to bring will. yourself out. You can't work for everybody at the same time. And you're going to take, like, the amount of, like, especially if you want to work in, like, hip-hop. Like, if you want to go shoot for Rolling Loud, bro, the amount of <laughs> bullshit you're going to take is crazy. And, I like, if you really want it, if, like, there are some kids who really want that shit and, like, really have a vision for it and really, like, see, like, a larger, like, see themselves in hip-hop more. That's very And true. for those people, like, bro, do your fucking thing. I have no, like, yeah. go change the game. Like, if you're going to be a Cole Bennett, go. Feel me? But, like, I don't love it that much. <laughs> just to be real. I'm, sorry, like, I'm starting to laugh. It's just the way he... No, nah, I'm like, bro, it, I'm like, it's... I don't the, love it that much. And, and, and that's why I said, like, when you asked me, like, if I had one piece of advice, like, that's why I say expectations. Mm -hmm. Just be real with yourself, mm -hmm. bro. Like, the the, the effort that it takes to be great at something. And we kind of talked about this last yeah. time when we lit. Mm -hmm. Bro, the true effort that it takes to be, like, really great at something. Like, Kobe level, Jordan level, Brady level. is like, truly insane. Like, it's honestly unfathomable to a lot of people. It's not normal. It's not normal. Not even... But, <laughs> it's not normal. You do work, you sleep. You do work, you sleep. That's, that's it. it. That's it. Like, there's no, like, hanging out. Like, there's no, like, taking breaks. Like, none of that shit. That's it. And I'm okay, bro. I don't want to be that great. I'm good. <laughs> I don't love it that much, bro. And I'm, I'm bro, happy I'm with good. saying that, bro. Like, it is okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's totally and that's wrong. not mediocre. Like, some people, some, really people some people, would say, oh, I'm happy with a mediocre life. I don't think that's mediocre. I think that's that's successful in your way. That's mm -hmm. subjective. Mm -hmm. And that makes you happy, bro. That's, that's good. All that fucking matter. Exactly. Bro, thank you for saying that. Yeah, bro, it's just important. Thank you for saying that. I'm just, you just you just took me back a little bit because um, we are outside of UT right now. I usually don't really come back to this campus, even though I graduated from here. But I spent a lot of years here where I don't even know if you knew. 
Well, you kind of did. I made beats and stuff like yeah. that. So I still do, but I don't send them to the same people that I used to. Yeah. Dog. I used to be, like the goal was to make a hit. And you already know with producers, a lot of producers know this. After you make a hit, and like just one, everybody knows your tag, everybody yeah. starts working with you, and you know, it's kind of like a cloud chasing kind of thing. Yeah. But your life changes. Money rolls in. And all you gotta do is keep making beats every day. But, People that produce know there's something called Mail Tracker. You know what Mail Tracker is? No. I still recommend for people to get it that are in business because you can see when someone opens your emails. Okay, and I have pixels like that. I don't oh, use Mail Tracker, maybe. But is it Mailchimp? I use Mailchimp. Okay, so I was using Mail Tracker. Okay. Because that's like, that's what let producers know like, okay, somebody's actually taking me serious. Yeah. Because you can see how many times they open it. You can see when they open it. Yeah. Oh my goodness! And just like the amount of names that were opening it i'm like yo it's like it's finally happening i'm at like the doorstep it never went through because <laughs> i'm like i had all these different rappers artists opening it more than like five six times tory lane's opening it 11 11 times I'm over here like i'm just waiting for an email back nothing but like i just remember going through that and how bad i wanted it the people around me the stuff that they were saying, especially as freshmen, that's not normal for a freshman. But all that's in my head is like, dog, I gotta, I gotta get it. I'm talking to my friends, I'm like, come on, come on out to the club. Like, no, I'm trying to make money right now. I'm trying to change my life. And just like, I didn't know that that was an abnormal thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To where that, all of that carried over to video, to where so many people could tell you, this are my vlogs. Like, you're still awake. You're still working, bro. Go home. It's just like a stick. It's literally a stigmatism that I don't sleep. So people can say that and they'll believe it. I can't even fight if it's a lie. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's ridiculous. So, I don't know. Now I'm here. I don't know if it's a good thing. Everything is a gift and a curse. That is a good one. <laughs> gift and a curse, my dog. All right, so it's definitely a gift in some areas, depending on curse in other areas. I'll say it's more of a gift than it is. It is definitely a gift. Still been going strong since 18, bro. Cause I, I got injured when I was playing soccer. Did you play sports growing up? I was a big soccer player. You played soccer? Yeah, I could have gone like D1. A couple of my dog, football. I didn't know you played soccer. Yeah, that's my shit. Where, where, so, where'd you play? High school ball. Okay. But I never played college ball. I never, I never. Me either. I, I got, I like sprained my ankle. Like to this day, I'm not, I'm not. It's not the same. Yeah. Same. I have a, a knee surgery, right? Yeah. I have a car. What's it called? Under your patella? Under your, uh... I have no idea. It's a cartilage. Sure. Cartilage under my patella, right? Both my knees. So it's overuse. You can't, like, heal that. You literally just stop. So it was like, you either stop, you get surgery on both your knees, or it's gonna mess up your hips and you keep playing, or you get one knee, rehab, other knee, and I'm like, bro, this is, like, too much. This is my freaking junior, senior year. Worst time, it's like... So it was crazy to look back. And to me, bro, it's like... I'm not trying to say it's the best thing that ever happened to me, but it probably will be, because that's when that was like the biggest pivotal moment, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> and like, that moment for me was like the, the next thing I do, I can't quit, because people that obviously don't know the mental side of what I had to go through, of walking away from something that's all that I knew for my entire life, you know what I'm saying? That, it didn't mess me up, but it changed me bad and and bad in the sense of like certain people can't tell me things i'll definitely listen but in this in the context of like nah you're working too hard yeah. you can't tell me anything yeah yeah for sure. with, i know you just told me about your back yeah and um can you actually i guess for them you go in you don't have to go all the way not like a quick synopsis yeah, 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 yeah i have i had so it is right now october 22nd of 2024 I was diagnosed, I have, how do I put this? I started feeling pain in my lower back seven months ago in April, and to make a long story short, I was diagnosed with Gillian Barr syndrome, GBS, if you look up GBS syndrome, you can, you can find, it, find out what it is. And basically, it can manifest in different parts of your body, but for me, it decided to manifest in my lower back and my legs. So, for a couple months, I was pretty much on bed rest. My legs would be numb. Even like right now, not oh, at this current second. Don't but say like that. You sometimes, scare me. Like I was taking a nap before this, and my like heels were a little bit numb and shit. 
got you. How do, so how do you how do you push through that, bro? Because it's not easy one going through that. You gotta act like everything's okay sometimes when it's not. Just like, you know, you gotta still get stuff done. Yeah. How do I get through GBS? How do I get through a debilitating disease? Um, or I guess not a disease syndrome. Um, take it day by day. That's day it. Day. Day. That's it. That's it. That's it. There's like honestly no special sauce to it. Um, be headstrong, or I was headstrong, and uh, I was just really concerned in the sense that I was tenacious. In the sense that, like for example, the first time I went to the hospital when like the shit first started acting up and it was like fucking up my entire right side of my body type shit. I went to the hospital and. I waited there for six hours before they gave me an MRI, and I made them give me an MRI. Like, I, like when I say I made them, I went in there and I low-key lied about my symptoms in the sense that so they can actually help you. Yeah. How do I put it? Because that's like so, they weren't. <laughs> what, what, what is my point? My point is that had I not been so like gung ho mm -hmm. about like y'all need to figure shit out, da da da. It would most likely be like around right now, mm -hmm. and I probably still wouldn't know like that's GBS and stuff. So, yeah, like how I got through the shit, bro. Number one, I'm still getting through it, but yeah, day by day, stay tenacious for me, and I definitely got deep in my prayer bag for sure. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of like. Part I feel, of me I like running this river right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Part, of me, part of me, look, you hate saying that. I'm not gonna lie. Why? Because I mean, it was how I grew up, and I love God. I do. Okay. I would. I would actually love to hear this. I'm gonna go I, keep to I, this. I don't believe like this is going. A lot of mm. people love to say like everything mm. happens for a reason. Mm. It's not true. Why do you say that? It's called free will. Free will. And like free will is a fundamental tenet of Christianity. Okay. Fundamental, like Christianity does not exist without free will. Okay. So, and mind you, mind you, for a little context, my dad you're, is you're a good, you is can a say doctor, anything you want. You're not but I'm, 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 I'm not like justifying what I'm saying. Okay, I'm just okay. giving you context about like why I might be saying. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. My dad is a doctor of philosophy and religion. Oh wow! So okay. I grew up like more or less being evangelized by this shit. Okay, okay. So you you basically grew up with a whole different perspective. From I guess my point is like I'm not one of these kids that's like barely thought about this shit or like came across oh, yeah. like a fucking hot take on fucking Reddit and was like, yeah, fuck Christianity. Like, nah, bro. Like, I thought about this shit. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <For me. laughs> he has some time. Like, I went, like, bro, I, I got baptized. I went to confirmation when I was in eighth oh, wow, grade. All right. For me, like, I went to I went to all the schools I've ever gone to have all been religious schools. Wow. Including this one? No, I'm like, except, okay, except okay, this okay. one. Except. Um. But I say all to say, and this, this is my claim, yeah. People love to say that that everything happens for a reason. And I understand the, the motive behind when people say that. And the motive is is to more or less just let everything go. Like, it's out of your hands. God, like, is the ultimate, is the ultimate dictator. Mm -hmm. And therefore, like, everything happens for a reason because, like, you couldn't do anything about it anyway. Mm -hmm. And not to say I completely disagree with it, but, like... What my philosophy teacher, my senior year of high school, always, or or said one time was, if little Johnny gets gets like, if something bad happens to someone, okay, that thing did not need to happen. No, it didn't. Mm -hmm. And like a lot of times, even for people like Trump, the difference between life and death is like moving their head two millimeters because they looked at the fucking board to show like dumbass immigration stats <laughs> because fuck Donald Trump but nonetheless <laughs> but nonetheless <laughs> but nonetheless my point is like <laughs> what was it did you ask me a question like I'm trying to bring this home yeah so so first you said you were getting back into your Oh, bags. I got my prayer yeah, bag yeah. because I'm my back and da, da 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 Yeah, so I guess yeah. to wrap up my back, I'm good. Put me like, this is how this shit goes. Yeah, just fucking stay down. To like expound on Christianity and like my thing on Christianity and my prayer bag. Oh, why I hate saying that, Loki. Yeah, yeah. Is because.
Take your time. I think God, I think God loves me and I think God has a plan and I think, but I think a lot of things in life are, are very much just is. It's not it moral, is, it's is. not immoral, okay. it's not good, it's not bad, it just is. Okay. And it's not God's job to like intervene with, every, with everything. Okay. So when my back starts hurting and I can't walk and I'm like sitting here like gra grappling with the idea that I might not be able to walk again mm -hmm. because I don't know what the fuck is going on, mm -hmm. like... Being like, oh God, why? Or like, the thought of like, I'm an ethical person. I go out of my way to help people. Why am I the one that's hurting? Like, I'm not gonna say it's a stupid thought, but it's it's futile. Mm -hmm. Because things just happen, bro. It just is. Right. No, keep going, keep going, keep going. Nah, that's it. Okay, okay. It just is. You positive? Yeah. So I, I have a couple questions. So I I. I can't, it can't see how you how you would see it like that. Yeah. And see, yeah, I totally get the perspective 100%. Yeah. But I have, so that's crazy because we're looking at the direction of the Barrymore. Yeah. That's where I was senior year with my roommate, Mike, yeah. who at the time was an atheist. And he might still be, but we always have the same conversation. And the conversations get heated, dog, yeah. because he'll, he'll ask me some wild questions just to like test me, you know? Yeah. So he'll ask the craziest questions. He's like, okay, so if Jesus told you to do something, you gonna do it? I'm like, yeah. He's like, without question? Yes. And I'm like, why? He's like, just cause, like, he's my Lord and Savior, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So he starts asking the most outrageous and bogus questions. He's like, so, <laughs> so if Jesus asked you to eat something off the ground, you gonna do it? I'm like, yeah. So he's just, like crying laughing. He's like, why would you do something like that? He's like, well, I don't know. Like, he just told me to do it. Like, I gotta trust him. Like. That's just how our faith works. Like, if there's there's the reason behind it that we may not know, yeah. and we can't see it, but He does, and He's not gonna lead us into, you know, a wrong. He's not gonna lead us into a wrong path or down a wrong path. Yeah. So that's just how my like how strong my faith is now yeah. because of the stuff that I've been through, been able to see with my own eyes. And it's definitely hard to, I can't like give someone else my eyes. You know what I'm saying? That's that is one of the craziest parts of life because it doesn't matter how much I could tell somebody something. It's up to them to like believe it. You know what I'm saying? So I was gonna look up scriptures. The first I'm gonna ask up ask questions. So are you went you said uh when something bad happens to somebody, it just is. Is there is there anything else besides like the back that has happened that maybe you, you like you've been like wrestling with it has been like just punch you in your head and you just like I can't understand why this is why this has happened to where you kind of been mad like god you know what i mean like you're like why would you let this happen to me kind of deal <sighs> man um has there been anything else like in other words like what other hard things have i gone through my life that's okay. like made me question yeah because i'll give you some of my background so i, I grew up in the church and the thing was, I know when everybody says that they grew up in the church, most people already have this perception of them, like they just kind of learn how to live exactly how the Bible says. So you can know all the stories, you can know every word, but if you're not doing it, your heart's not gonna change. You could, like there's so many people that know the Bible, will judge other people off the Bible, but they're not actually living their life. So like growing up in the church, I just knew of the stories and the morals and how you're supposed to live. And of course, I went to First Baptist Church of Glen Arden okay. in Maryland, um, right across from Riverdale Baptist. But it got to a point in my life where I remember I started paying close attention to other people and the things that were happening in their life if they maybe committed certain like sins. And I was like, certain people may get away with those things, but like down the road they always face the consequences or they're living in the consequence and they don't understand yeah. that's the consequence of doing exactly what you know like what you're saying. Like karma. yes basically and i i understood and this could just be my own understanding um that like that's why god gives us free will because we have the freedom to choose exactly what we want to do yeah. you know and um so back on the bad things happen yeah. i grew up all the time like because i was such a simple kid i just wanted to have fun with my friends and when bad things would happen to me, I would wrestle so hard, bro. I'd be in my room, because I was in my room a lot, and that's where I do all my thinking. 
be sitting in my room like, man, like, God, I didn't do anything to that person. They like, they call me bad names. They being so mean to me. I'm not doing anything to them. They making the whole class laugh. Like, what? Why did I? I didn't deserve that. I came back home. One of my, you know, I won't get too deep. I'll just say like a relative is like bashing me, belittling me. I haven't said anything to them. I don't talk about them that way, God. Like, this is kind of messing with my head. Now I can't go to sleep. I'm, I'm angry. Like, I'm losing sleep over this. And I can't say anything every time I say stuff get hurt again and like all the like god like why would you put me in this household like no one else can see this i try to say something and it always gets blocked out like god what's going on you you're loving like i don't feel the love what is happening you know like i was i grew up a lot with that to get to maybe like high school and talking to other people who maybe didn't grow up in a church or maybe just maybe could be dealing with the same things and they like school guy he was never there for me all that stuff so i was just like it was so interesting to watch all the different perspectives to be here and to look all the way back and be like i don't even know if i would redo anything again only because maybe i would have missed so many things that he needed me to see going back to everything happens for a reason <laughs> so, I don't, no, no, I, 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 so like i, 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 I guess I, I completely understand yeah. completely understand how you would see it that way. And I know for me, with those phrases, they have so much power and like meaning to it because I guess the things that God has brought me through to hear. And everyone's path is different. So I was gonna say like, when, I guess when bad things happen to you, how do you deal with it? Like, how do you even roll with it? I know you're getting back into like prayer life now and everything. I never, I never, I never looked at bad things. I, I'm not gonna say never. I think there there might have been a time in my life where I looked at bad things or good things as more like correlationary, right? Whereas like like you said, like karma, like mm. okay, that person did bad to me, but eventually they'll get it. But once go it goes around, comes around, kind of yeah. deal. And not to say it doesn't apply to like a lot of things in life, but believe it or not, I think that the reason why that applies is because destructive people destroy things hurt people hurt people easily so like when destructive people or like not even just people like things like just like their lives jobs oh, shoot, whatever yeah. Yeah. for me so like when you're a destructive person like no shit's gonna come back around because you destroy things yeah. and like you're gonna put yourself in that path but it's not because like karma got them yeah. it's be and not that, i'm not saying like this doesn't negate that mm -hmm. god exists mm -hmm. i mean, i'm not saying i don't believe in god but what i'm saying is like I think bad actions catch up with you because bad things are just bad. Like, yeah, that's yeah. just because, like, the world works like that. Mm -hmm. But, like, the perfect example is, like, people like Epstein and shit, or Diddy. Oh, we, we go down the road. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, just, like, I'm not saying they would have... How do I put it? Obviously, they got caught, right? Yeah, yeah. But there are a lot, of, a lot of people who have done a lot of bad things and, like, got away scot-free. Mm -hmm. For me, I think more than we would like to, like, attribute. Okay. Which is why, like, I would hate to say that karma really exists. Mm -hmm. Not in, like, this physical realm. Okay. I think maybe once you die, mm -hmm. yeah, you got retribution waiting for you <laughs> because you, you can't do shit about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe, like, in this realm, bro, I think if you're good enough at being bad, you can get away with it. Yeah, you can. And I know, like, so there's another scripture. Um, I might butcher it. I'm trying to remember the exact words. It's like, what is the point of it to gain the whole world yet you let lose your soul? Yeah. And so... I know yeah, that absolutely. that applies to so many different things. Yeah. Definitely applies to those same people who maybe just, you know, they're quick to evil. They just steal, kill, destroy, whatever in their path just to gain money and power. They, they gotta face it at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to it comes down to that that day, they they it's not gonna be worth anything. Yeah, it's like you could be a billionaire on earth. You could yeah. if you want to. You could screw over how many people you want and get away with it. But there's a day where we all got to face. Yeah. There's a one thing promised in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They definitely got to take account for it. So it's like, I know too, people that may not even believe fully in like heaven, hell, God, the Bible, like all that. So where that's definitely like extremely frustrating. Yeah. It's like, how the heck did they get all this? And I'm trying to go on easy mode and be nice to people. Yeah. And they screw me over and I can't get, you know, like, yeah. I get it fully. Well, I know, especially in business, that's like, I think that's a big thing that especially kids nowadays with mm. social media when I gotta get past the idea of like get rich quick. Mm. 
and like quick be in like five years. Like I mean like bro, like, it takes for like 15, 20 years to build something like like if you look at like statistically the amount of CEOs and founders that mm-hmm. found good shit and are successful mm-hmm. are all like 45 and up. Yeah. They're pretty old right now. Okay, like bro, like the best things in your life are yet to come. Mm-hmm. Alright, like mm-hmm. there's no amount of work that you can do. I had to get past this shit. <laughs> because like because because well, but it doesn't help when you fucking when nepotism and I'm not oh, no, you're good, listen you're good. Yeah, ultimately I bro I support LeBron and Bronny James yeah. all fucking day bro and that is nepotism mm. but it, it, and low key is like the fruits of his labor though bro that is okay yeah white people have been doing that for centuries and black people <laughs> for some reason feel too, are like too prideful to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. too prideful to be like mm. yeah I'll do this like I, like black black people are the only fucking <laughs> so, so, such like, a tangent like we get the but black ourselves. people are the only people who will look at who will succeed look at their kids and be like you gotta struggle too hey you only people hey. bro like seriously like the only culture and I'm like that goes back to slavery of specifically African Americans you finna I'm finna so crash I'm like, out I'm like that'll, that, and that goes back to slavery that goes back to yeah. self hate that goes back to like a bunch of things but Man. I guess my point is saying to say you are not wrong but bro, bro, I'm, You're, I'm not gonna be a doctor in gender studies, bro. I'm trying to tell you, but I got so many hot takes, but like that's not a, I gotta say, I got, I'm saving it. I need, I need more hot takes from you. I'm gonna text you after I this. Got, bro, I got, bro, like we can talk about no. my cup, bro. Like I, people would get so mad at me. Talk so? about this, especially, especially, especially like dating as a 22 okay, year old. Okay, like okay. bro, fucking crazy, bro. It's insane, right? I mean, we in Tampa, bro, we like, already know what the bro, scene look like out here. Bro, like people, I'm get, cool. People, with, yeah. I'm literally, I do my work. Yeah. I talk to my friends. I go that's it, bro. That's, it. that's all that's I got enough. for you. Yeah, I'm not finna. Dog, in this economy, I'm not spending on a date. Swear to God. That's just gonna be like, oh, so what'd you do? Like, yeah. oh, buy me this. No, no, no. Help me. Yeah, bro. We can help each other. Help me. But on the topic of the parents, bro. Bro, you that hit home. I, yeah. Like, I I see that across the board. I mean, we all do. Yeah. It's literally like, oh, I struggle. It's okay to struggle, just like I did. Yeah. And just boom, that's it, yeah. right? That's exactly why we we like we're almost like pushing ourselves more behind than we've already been, and something that we have to like literally start and stop at the same time is doing that to our kids. Like just one, be there for them. Two, like the same way that we're, we're here doing this. It's not that hard to do it for your kid, bro. They're a person too. Like it's really not. It's not that hard, bro. Of course there are sacrifices. Don't get me wrong. You appreciate your parents, but like. It's, it's really not that hard out here. You can you can treat a person a lot different, bro. There's so many different. I'm not even gonna go down that road. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that's upset. Saying, but it's, it's, it's a whole other conversation. I'm gonna get it's upset. Because I'm gonna get upset. But that's just man. I, I was I say that all the time. And no disrespect, white folk. You do it right. Good job. You have learned it and you perfected it. It's exactly why. Exactly why. No disrespect. A lot of them be buck wild in college because they know that they're comfortable yeah. after. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to go buck wild yeah. in college, but it sometimes really feel like I'm fending for myself. Yeah. And that could do a lot to especially black men and women. Yeah. Dog, because yeah. a lot that's exactly why most of us are closed office sometimes. Yeah. You just gotta lock in. Like what else what else can you do? Yeah. You you could detail me in the hole. Yep. Shoot. How do we even get here? I have no <laughs> idea. I'm trying to think back. I got one more question about the prayer life. Yeah. Mm. This is fun by the way. I'm enjoying this. Huh? This is fun by the way. I'm enjoying this. I'm so everyone has been saying that, and I'm. I'm this is what is fun to me. I'm even, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not used to this yeah. at all. Plus, I'll finally give the story of exactly why I started this in the first place. So. There's a homeless man that I met Saturday, November the 4th, I believe it was the 4th. Of last year? Yeah, I don't know if the Saturday was the 4th, but it's definitely the Saturday because I was with one of my friends from church and we were gonna feed the homeless on her birthday. Very wholesome and mindful thing to do. So at first I had this whole perspective of like, all right, there's a lot of homeless people here. Like, I don't know if someone's gonna attack us. Like, you know what I'm saying? We got. You know, like my perspective is off a little bit. It's wrong. It's not, I should not be having this perspective, especially as a Christian. So I go, we start talking to people and I'm having fun off rip. So I'm like, bro, there are so many stories just sitting here. I love film and that's like knowing film and how you have to write scripts and actually know the story behind certain things. Especially if you're watching it, you understand how people get the inspiration. I'm like, there's so many people here with stories. 
and not the fact that they're just sitting here but so many people walk by them every single day like you could just lend them like a dollar or two or just some food water or whatever like why not and so i end up meeting this dude his nickname is jersey and his i guess it's like his bench partner his name is bill they were both on i think it's just bill they were on the set of a rocky three okay. and they were telling me all about it and rocky is my favorite right. series of all time okay. so of course i'm like yo like why was that like bro tell me everything and like in that moment i realized i don't have people that are like me in the sense that they want to be a director or they like movies and they watch the movies the same way i do so i've never ever actually had that community to even just geek out over the stuff that i really love because when i'm doing it it's always either weird it's too much you know what i'm saying people get the wrong ideas like oh he's obsessed over this movie blah 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 i'm like bro y'all have no clue what i'm even looking at just like I realized that in that moment and I wanted to talk to him more. So I told him I'm gonna come back. And he was like, none of them do. I was like, what? Look, you don't even know how serious I am right now. Like, I need to hear this information. So I said, bet, I'm gonna come back on my birthday. And he's like, all right, cool, I'm gonna hold you to it. And I, I, I kept my promise and I actually went back. He was there, but just like, at the time, he was talking about his faith too. He didn't believe in God. And so when I get back, when I walk, up to like the same spot he was the homes people started gathering immediately because they knew that i had food and i just thought it was a cool thing i got to meet some more people hear some more stories and like i'm doing it again on um, january 2nd that's my birthday i'm going to be out there seeing pete and we're going to help feed the homeless again if anyone else would like to join participate or donate but like that that moved me so much bro just because the fact that that's someone who's been on the film set has been in a position that I haven't even been able to see yet. That is my childhood dream. That I'm everything that I'm working for is leading up to that exact moment, and people just walking by. That messed me up Tough. bad. You feel me? Messed me up bad. I'm like, bro, just sitting there all day thinking, about, thinking that people don't care about me. I'm like, dog, I care about you. Everything that you said just inspired me so much. You know? And he's over here thinking, like he's. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. He can't believe it. You know how many people are just walking? Like that, that messed me up heavy, bro. Especially from being a person who literally grew up not feeling heard in anything that I did. That's why like most of the most of the time people think I'm quiet. Because if I'm in a room and I'm not talking, I'm either observing the room or I know whatever I'm saying, it means nothing to anybody. So for some to see someone else that has less already and they feel like that, bro, it hits my heart. So that's why I'm here. Because I'm, I'm trying to reach out to people I know other people got stories, and I want to let other people know. Like you said, I love you, bro. You you don't know how many people don't hear that. You don't know how many people like grow up just trying to hear like, bro, you're doing a good job. Like I see you trying. I see you working hard. You know, when other people maybe stealing, getting it easy. Like I see you actually putting time and work into it. See what you know what I'm saying? Like so that just hits home. I know we need a lot more of that. Back on the reggae music. <laughs> it's that shit, we need more. It was just I'll like that's so much. It worth. It's worth so much more than money. So much more, bro. It's priceless. So that's why we're here. Ah, that's definitely inspiration. Um, I heard you say that uh, a lot of times when you're in a room, like you know that people don't really care about what you say. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a fundamental point of view that you might need to heal from. Yes. High key. And I, I, I know that. And that's what I, I hate that I know that. Because even in church settings, when we're in like D groups and stuff, I'll literally tell them, I'm like, I've written down all these answers for the questions that we are about to talk about in podcast sermons, whatever. And like, just please forgive me or like work with me if sometimes I just don't talk. Cause I'm still trying to get over that. So when it's times where I am talking, and people don't know what I'm saying or they don't take what I'm saying seriously, I get upset. Cause I'm like, I don't even know the next time I feel like talking like this. So now I'm here where I'm like, I'm literally trying to break through that wall every single time. You know what I mean? So it's, this is also practice therapeutic. That's good. And for other people who may struggle with that, uh, I guess I'll be your inspiration now, but just like, yeah. That's good shit. I could not let myself be the same, to, to, to live and believe the same lies that I knew weren't ever true. And like, back on faith bro sometimes the enemy the devil like knows what you may be fearful of 
So if he keeps you in certain cycles, it could be temptation. It could be, it could be men. It could be females. It could be addictions. It could be whatever, dog. And if you allow yourself to continue to stay in those cycles, you may live in there forever. And so something that I lived in is honestly like not speaking up. And so the other ways that I spoke is literally being a creative, music, graphics, video. That a part of me is in everything that I make. And the fact that people still don't respect it to this day makes me more upset. So I'm like, all right, last resort. You guys speak up, bro. And yo, so that's just like, that's one thing that God has shown me, God has taught me, God has got me through. Free will. I had the choice to speak. I just never chose. So I was always scared. And then there came a day where all that fear went away. And people were like, yo, like, what is he talking about? Like, he's talking so much, he's acting weird. I'm like, nah, I had no fear no more. I never felt this and since I was like six. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm just like, this is new to me. I don't have fear no more. So like, that's just crazy, right? Wow. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, for sure, because I've been in the same boat a lot of times. Facts, a lot of us are. Yeah. That's look like there's something from all of our childhoods as creatives that we may not see that always comes out in the stuff that we do all the time for me it was literally not being heard that's why i love beats so much you gotta listen to the beats to understand the message before the lyrics that's a great plan huh? mm -hmm. yeah i think you'd be surprised that not a lot of creators have that ethos though mm -hmm. i mean i think that's unique i don't think i don't think i'll think a lot of people like i think that's probably that's probably why your work's so good mm -hmm. i appreciate that yeah because like I feel like you have to have, you have to be in touch with yourself at least emotionally to like create good shit. I wasn't dog. Like I was and I wasn't. I, I think was. I think I think maybe more than more than you give you cre yourself credit for. Okay. Or like maybe it's even like a subconscious thing, you know. I say that only because I know for a long a long period of time, the ambition only came from frustration. I hear and yeah. then after after I stopped being so mad at the cars that I was dealt yeah. and for certain situations I won't say right now yeah. but um I remember this moment bro I was back with the volleyball team and we were in Europe yeah. and it's so kind of fucking lit too. <laughs> <laughs> it was the bro <laughs> coolest trip of my life yeah. most fun I've ever had on a trip whatsoever right so it gets to the last day and bro so we had to all go around and say like what we're grateful for and stuff I go first because I'm not like, you know, a part of the team, but I am. But I just say I'm grateful for everybody. If it wasn't for you, I probably still wouldn't be here at UT because I have other job opportunities I could take. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm able to travel now. All these different schools know who I am. But like, you guys keep me here. Like, it's not just because the team, but the, their chemistry that they have. They actually are really cool people off the court. I love that about them. So first they go, you know, oh, all that stuff. <laughs> but then there's tears start to come out like and the whole room is crying and i'm just sitting there i'm like i feel so detached from this moment why can't i cry like i feel like left out but i'm not you know what i'm saying and that hit me hard because i was like i was like can i cry the last time i cried was years ago you know and i'm like yo like i can't tell it from this emotionless like what's going you know i'm trying to think through it and one of the girls asked me he's like you didn't tear up not once, and I'm not trying to be tough. I feel like messed up inside, yo. I'm like, I don't, I couldn't even feel the empathy of the tears. And I'm trying to dig deep on why. And what was it? Oh, so eventually I got I got through that. I worked through it. I was, of course, learning different things, being more in touch with myself, learning myself more to where people started to see the shift in my creativity. So people are just more like, yo, like your videos getting crazy. So I'm hearing it and it's just really not clicking. But it's just, I literally started to not be so tough on myself, bro. Cause like, of course the things I have to go through that people don't really know, stuff I gotta go through at home, it's just life in general. They don't see that. They just see it, all the videos, stay with you. They just see the videos and the pictures and all the stuff we put out and it's all quality. It's all 4K, it's clean, it's pretty. They never see what happens behind the lens. You feel me? So it's just, now I'm in a way better place, obviously. I, of course, would like people to listen to me when I talk. If they don't, I am really just gonna walk away. If they chase me, I'm gonna walk faster. <laughs> <laughs>
That's it. You got anything else you may want to get off your chest? You've nah, been here like, for a good little minute. I mean, like, I mean, this, I, I, um, there are a thousand other things I want to talk about. Which are, we got like, more. I was about to say, like, because this ain't we, it. we could be here for four hours, though. That was that. Yeah. Uh, but I guess just for some money. I guess first part one, he won. Appreciate you, bro. I just love it. He's your agent, my dog. Yes, sir. We got Zane.